Hello. Hello, hello. Okay, part four, sensation and perception. We're going to look at some other senses and some other types of stuff. So here we go. Let's talk about touch. Now, touch is actually a mix of direct senses and specialized nerve receptors. There's not really like uh, any special receptors on any different parts of our body that are specific to like different types of uh, feelings that we get from touch. The only one that we get that is specific is pressure. So we can, you know, we press our arm, we can feel how much pressure we got. You know, that's very important uh, so that we don't like crush a baby or something when we're holding one, right? Uh, but other than that, it's just this mix of pressure, warmth. We have a when we touch something, we can feel it's warmth, uh, cold, and then pain when we touch things. It's that combination of the nerve receptors with the senses all combined together to get that whatever sense of touch that we have. So it's a you know it's a mixed bag here. Um, and then right pressure was the only one that had its own deal. Uh, kinesthesis, that is the sense of position and the movement of your body parts, right? So if I take my left hand, I know it's over here on my left side. I'm shaking it. Maybe you can't see it, but I'm shaking it and I know it's over here. It's kind of your awareness of around uh, what's going on around you. Your, um, your sight, right, your eyes, they play a big role in your kinesthetic awareness when you're looking around, right? Try to balance yourself on one leg and then close your eyes and see what happens, right? You're, so your kinesis uh, relies heavily on sight as well, but your, uh, it helps keep that balance around you. Uh, connected with that is vestibular sense, and your vestibular sense is in your ear. Um, it monitors your head position, which monitors your body position, right? If your head doesn't know what's going on, then the rest of your body is not gonna know what's going on. So vestibular sense, uh, inside of your ear, it's the fluid in the semicircular canal, right? We, we think we talked about this with hearing, right? And so it's, it's, uh, it's flat, and then it, as the sloshes around in there, it triggers the little hairs on the cochlea, which, you know, sends the message to the brain. And so that's right, when you keep spinning, right? If you did, like, when you were little and you spun around, like, 500 zillion times, and then you thought it was just this great feeling and the world just kept spinning around you, um, that's because your vestibular sends that fluid in there is just still swishing, right? So, um, next let's talk about pain. So pain, there's a couple of approaches. I mean, this is the, the common, most common is the gate control theory of pain. So what it says is you have these two basic types of pain receptors or receptors that are sending stuff to your brain, right? Um, afferent neurons uh, are sending stuff to your brain. So you have these little pathways and then you have these big nerve pathways, right? Let's maybe change the color on those. The big nerve pathways, does that make sense? So these are the big ones here in the red. And what happens is, what gate control theory says is this, and so this white one here is the, is the pain receptor. What happens is, is that if these guys, right, the big ones get overstimulated or it kind of, they expand and they cut off the, the pain receptors and it closes the gate, right? It closes the gate. And so you can't receive pain up here anymore. Um, examples of, so basically you've got like big fat ones and little ones kind of in, in between. If the other nerve receptors that are sending other senses to your brain uh, really start working hard, they expand a little bit and it cuts off the gate, like closes the gate for your pain receptors. Examples, you're in a, a sports uh, contest, you're playing basketball, you got a ton of adrenaline, you've got these different senses all coming into your body, shooting your brain, you sprain your ankle and you don't feel it, right? Or you, you're, it's not very painful at all because the idea is that you've got all these other senses going to your brain and it's cutting off the um, pain receptor towards your brain, right? So it's controlling this gate. Uh, also, um, there's this thing, you know, if you have like uh, spasms in different parts of your body, you'll have uh, this e-stem, e right? As if you go to physiotherapy or something like that. So I had this back pain one time. I was tweaking my, I was working out and I tweaked my back, lifting some weights, you know, and my back started spasming, right? So I put this as east end patch on my back, right? And the idea was is that there was so much stimulation going on, right? It was sending all these like electrical, it felt like a just a on, on your back. 
felt like a bunch of pins prickling you. And the idea was that you're sending all this extra information towards your brain and that's going to cut off the um, pain receptors of that, that, that were sending to your brain so you don't notice it any longer. I mean, it's not... So that's this gate control theory. Um, we don't know 100% of this is exactly how it works, but this is our best guess. This has been around for a, a long time. Um, additionally with pain is the biopsychosocial approach. And this says that, you know, there's a number of different things that contribute to your feeling of pain. Um, your, so your biological influence, um, how is your body actually going to receive that? It was the physical, bio, biological reception of that pain. Um, and your brain's interpretation of it. Uh, the psychological influence, are you paying attention, right? Um, so sometimes you, right, will cut your finger off or right, if it's a woodshop accident, right? So um, my uh, dad teaches woodshop and he cut off a, uh, some kid cut off his finger in class, right? So they, he wrapped it up real quick before the kid could see it. The kid didn't even really realize, didn't see the, have the pain, right, go to his brain because he didn't see it at that moment, right? And so uh, he wasn't paying attention to, you know, the the the, uh, the wound, and when he opened it, when they opened it at the doctor, he saw, it, and then all this huge amounts of pain came flushing to him. Um, and so it's, uh, you know, your ex expectations, your attention, and then finally, um, your social cultural uh, influences, right? If you're um, with a bunch of guys and you're not supposed to be feeling pain by doing this thing, or you're in the military or something, you're supposed to fight through it. You actually can experience less pain in that situation. So all these things fit together. Um, real quick, taste. Uh, so taste, you've got, um, sorry, oops, sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and then this was uh, basically for a long, long, long time I thought these were the four, and then recently they've added um, unami, right? Um, and so these five tastes, these combinations, make up the taste that you um, experience, right? And taste also has a huge, huge uh, um, relationship with olfaction, with your sense of smell. We'll see in a second here. So these are the like what makes up the taste. Um, unami is this most recent one. It's like a savory uh, flavor, and so how smell kind of incorporates with that is both both taste and smell are chemical senses, right? The chemicals from the food, right, molecules go on your tongue. And by the way, I was looking at tongues on YouTube or uh, Google to try to put one picture of it on here. Don't do a Google search of tongues. It's uh, it's a little bit overwhelming seeing all these people's tongues sticking out. It's just a little gross, right? I had to get real pick quick one, uh, the, the most attractive tongue I could find in the shortest amount of time here. So, uh, But you also see on this tongue these little little tiny bumps, right? And in each one of these little bumps, right, you see those little tiny bumps. Each one of those little bumps has 200 taste receptors on there, right? And they all make that up. Um, and so smell, smell at the top of your nose, way back here. So you can kind of see it on, uh, on here at the top of your nose. You've got these little receptors down here and these little... Receptors, the smell, the molecules from the smells connect with the with the little hair-like molecules right here, right, and sends it up to, via the axons, right? We learned in biopsych, and then that sends it to your brain for interpretation. Um, in your brain, it goes directly to your olfactory uh, cortex, which is right next to your memory center. It's one of the oldest parts. Uh, senses that humans have, and so it bypasses the thalamus, right? It goes directly to the uh, olfaction, olfactory cortex, bypasses the thalamus, and therefore smell and memories, right, have the strongest um, relationship as far as senses go. Um, your smell tends to go down as you age, um, and when smell goes down, taste also goes down. This is why older people sometimes like more bitter tasting food or stronger tasting food than little kids, because little kids have good senses of smell, great sense of taste, and so uh, they're more apt to be uh, react to different strong senses. Um, so there you go. Um, smell, so you want to remember smells, uh, you know, go directly to the uh, smell center, if you will. And uh, smell and taste are both chemical. So uh, that's part four. Thank you very much.